Ex Machina is a gritty, bright, custom-made seven-string electric guitar from Sound Iron, and it is a great addition for any composer, but especially if you're anything like me and you're not a guitar player yourself. When searching for sample libraries, especially if you don't play that instrument, there needs to be a certain level of trust when picking out that library. What's the playability like? Am I gonna be spending more time learning the interface than actually writing? Who's even making the library itself? Now, one of the reasons why I'm a fan of Axe Machina is because it is a collection of Craig's 20 years of guitar playing experience all in one package. So Craig Peters has sampled his personalized seven string Kiesel Aries from the body to the fretboard, even to the pick itself, just so we can get the death metal sounds that he uses in his own playing style. And after getting a chance to play around with Axe Machina from the perspective of a non-guitar player, I found it super fresh and intuitive and I'm just really excited to explore it even further. So before we get started, I just wanna give Craig and everyone at Sound Iron a huge thank you for sending over a copy just so I can review and discuss it with you all today. Do keep in mind that if you are interested in this library or any of Sound Iron's other libraries, you can save 5% by using my discount code RRMUSIC. And I did leave a link in the description down below. So let's dive into Ax Machina. So this library is gonna be divided into two major categories. DI and Amped. So let's just take a listen to the standard DI patch compared to the Amped. And then let's take a listen to Amped. And I think you can really hear the difference between that direct sound versus what it's like when it's amped. Also, what's nice is that you can use the DI patch, and then if you have any amp plugins or effects, you can always add it to that patch alone. Now, each of these categories, DI and amped, comes with a standard NKI, a light version, a simple version, and then a simple light NKI. If we were just to take a look at the standard DI NKI, it's gonna come in at just under two gigs of RAM. So the light version of that comes up at just under one gig. Uh, the biggest difference is that the light version is gonna offer less round robins. Less round robins means less system RAM, which means you can take this on the go or if you just need to be a bit more mindful of your resources. Then just comparing the standard DI patch to the simple DI patch, you're gonna get a simpler interface as well as a simpler articulation keyboard. So let's just take a look at the main interface. At the top, you're gonna get your basic knobs, like how much body you want, the attack and offset. Over on the right, you get the release, uh, release volume, and how much vibrato. And then you can also adjust if you want it to be normal, auto, or just turn off the release altogether. Then in the center, you're gonna get a volume knob, which also acts as a dynamic knob as well. When it's set to dynamics, you're gonna get a softer sound when it's turned all the way to the left. And then a more aggressive sound all the way to the right. When set to volume, the velocity of how hard you press the keys will determine the bite of the guitar. Then by moving down, you'll get the articulation map. Over here, you can edit, save, load uh, different articulations. Then by default, we'll get pick sustains, pick palm mute, power chord sustains, power chord palm mute, pinch harmonics, and then chromatic pinch harmonics. Uh, so let's just take a listen to a little bit of each one. So this is pick sustains. Palm mute. Power chord sustains.
power chord palm mute. Pinch harmonics. And then chromatic pinch harmonics. And then just moving down from the articulations, we will get a few different features here. First up is pick direction. Now, as a non-guitar player, you might not be overly concerned with the direction of the pick. Um, so if that's the case, it's automatically set to alternate. So it goes up or it goes down. However, the direction of the pick does impact the sound of your guitar. If you need something specific like down or up, you can set it accordingly. Again, as a non-guitar player, I'm just gonna keep it at alternating until I find a reason to change it. Play mode is a cool feature that lets you play normally, but you can also set it to repeat, strum, legato, or hammer. So if you set it to repeat, if you just hold down the sustain pedal of your MIDI keyboard, it'll repeat the note on release. So. By setting it to strum, you can then use this down here where you can adjust the timing or the randomness of the strum. And then you'll notice that over here, we just got three more articulation keys. If you hold down, let's say a triad, we'll get three more keys added. Notice how we're not getting any sound just from holding down the chord. But if we were to press the keys at the top of the range, let's see. We heard the individual F, A flat, and C because we adjusted the time of the strum, and that E at the top will either alternate between up or down. That was down. The next key above that, the F, is always gonna be up. The F sharp is always gonna go down. And then the keys that we add from a triad, if we just hold down two chords, if we just hold down the one, if we hold down four, the keys adjust accordingly at the top. So if I hold down that triad and play the G, I just get that F. So that strum feature is definitely more chord focused. And then if we were to set it to legato, this is gonna give you more of a smooth transition with a little bit of attack when you go to the next note. And then Hammer is just going to soften that attack. Dual mode is really cool because you automatically start with two guitars evenly spread to the left and right. You can turn it off, so it's more of a mono signal. You can just pick guitar one. Guitar two. And let's put it back to dual. And then you can slide the guitars left and right. Notice how the guitars get closer and then they go opposite. Um, but you can also unlock the, the two guitars and then what you do to one won't affect the other. Uh, so you have a lot of options there. 
And then you can also adjust the pitch bend range. It starts off with one step, but you can go quarter step, half step, one and a half steps, and then two steps. And then right in the middle, we're gonna get our basic features uh, where you can just adjust the articulations you want, panning left and right, velocity range, and you can pick your key switch, whether you want it latching or just a temporary hold. And then one of my favorite features on the main page is this string setup. This is such a simple feature, but I think it can really make a lot of difference in the sound of your guitar. You start off with all seven strings available to you at a predetermined range. So there's not gonna be any overlap between these strings. Down here, orange is the seventh string, yellow is the sixth, green is the fifth, this light blue is the fourth, uh, dark or regular blue is the third, purple is the second, and then pink is the first string. And then each string has a different timbre, so an F on one string is gonna sound different than the same F on another. So let's just take a listen to string one and then string two. Let's play the F. And string two but I want to turn off string one. Like string one alone is gonna sound much brighter compared to string two. And what I think is really cool is that you can solo each string individually and their ranges, right? Then we get a little bit of overlap and then we just get string six, a little bit of overlap, but then just string seven. So you do have a lot of control just by picking and matching different strings together. But then if you wanna mix the sound of all the strings overlapping, you can press this all button and it turns on every string in the string setup. So you get the full range, but there's a subtle mix between the different strings. versus off. So when they're all off, you can hear the difference in timbre between each string, but when it's on, it becomes just one blended mix, which I really think is cool. And you can always adjust whether it's latching or temporary. So next up is gonna be the sequencer area. So like the main interface, it's still part of this performance tab at the bottom. And I think this sequencer gives the library just a whole new layer of playability. It's basically an arpeggiator specifically designed for this guitar library. All right, so let me just turn it on, activate sequencer, and just take a listen. <laughs> I think this sequencer just gives the library just so much life. Uh, if we look at the top, it is gonna have the same basic knobs as the main page. We activated the sequencer here. You have the sequencer direction. Right now it's set to down up, but you can go just up, just down, up, down, zigzag all around, move in, move out. Uh, chord as played random. So you have a lot to pick when it comes to the direction. You can randomize the, the steps, how many steps you want played. You can save and load any sequence or maps that you might come up with. And now this first line that we see is gonna determine the note value. So they're all set to 16th notes. You can pick between, you know, uh, half notes, dotted quarter, quarter notes, eighth notes, uh, dotted 16th, 32nd, so you have a bunch to choose from there. Then we have the volume of each individual note value. If you want, you can drag the volume up, you can make it really soft. Or make it really aggressive. Then just below the volume, we have the pick directions. Right now it's set to an alternating down up. But by pressing option or alt click, you can set it all to up or set it all to down. And then if you press command or control click, it'll go back to alternating. So that's a really quick and easy way if you don't wanna have to go in one by one and adjust. And then we see these slots. It's uh, really just focused on slot one, slot two, 
slot one, and then the rest are slot two. And these relate back to what we saw on the main page, the articulations in slot one. So pick sustains, and then slot two are the picked palm mutes. So we know that this is a sustain and this is a sustain, the rest are the palm mutes, and we can really hear that when playing it back. <laughs> Bum, bum. Bum, bum. And of course, you can always pick uh, from up to 12 different slots, depending on what you load in. And then what's really cool is that you can randomize the note value, the volume, or the pick direction just to give you a sound that you might not have really thought of on your own. And then finally, you can give the sequencer a bit more of a human element uh, with this humanize knob and the swing knob. And now we're gonna leave the performance tab and check out this effects rack. So this is where you're gonna really be able to customize the sound of your guitar. By default in rack one, we get some distortion, a screamer, uh, a chorus. Over on rack two, we got reverb, delay, cabinet. So let's just take a listen to what they sound like. I guess let's try maybe the distortion. Let's try adjusting the tone. All right, maybe the bass. And then whether we want it mono. Uh, let's check out rack two. We could try the reverb. So really nice sound right out of the box. But what's also great is that Sound Iron also gives you a bunch of presets that you can just pick and choose without having to worry or load up anything yourself. Let's try Mellow Ambience. And so that basically comes with a delay, reverb, the stereo, but it's turned off, um, a dynamics limiter, right? We have a phaser, chorus, filter, EQ, but they're all turned off. We also have maybe something washed out. All right, so this comes with a reverb, nothing else in the first rack. Rack two comes with another reverb, delay, uh, algorithmic reverb. So it actually comes with a ton of different effects. That's a really washed out, like really dull, soft sound. So those are just some of the presets that you can choose from. You can also adjust, save, load. Uh, and if you want to pick specific effects to add in yourself, there is a little arrow drop down menu here where you get filter, EQ, a bunch of dynamics, uh, amps, cabinet, rotator, right distortion, lo-fi, screamer, reverb, stereo. So you have so much to choose from. So that pretty much covers everything that's gonna come in Axe Machina. Like I said, by no means is guitar my main instrument. So having a library like this just makes me feel much more confident in incorporating an electric guitar into my music. Like I already know I'm gonna get so much value out of just that sequencer alone. Again, I wanna thank Craig and everyone at Sound Iron for sending over a copy of Axe Machina. It is such an awesome library. And again, if you are interested in picking up this library for yourself or really any of Sound Iron's other libraries, you can save 5% off your purchase with the discount code RRMUSIC. So I left a link in the description down below. All right, so I hope you got value out of today's video. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, happy composing.